Megan, how, how's earnings season going? We getting through some of these concerns around shortages and inflation and, and margin pressure, okay? Well, Sarah, I think those are going to be the key points to be following as we continue to get more companies reporting. I will say that we started off very strong. Um, price response to earnings beats has also been better than what we've seen, at least in the, in the last quarter or two. But my concern is mainly uh, that what's started off in terms of the financials is not necessarily what's to come. We have very strong results from the financials if you think about beats. X financials, beats have been a little bit lower. And I think that as we move into the broader market, um, we're going to be faced with more of these issues around supply chains and inflation. And, and we don't see them going away anytime real soon. We think supply chain pressures will be with us for the next few quarters. So it really is a matter of whether companies can manage through this. We think larger companies are probably better suited to do that than small caps. Um, but it's a key risk as we look at the inflationary environment over the next year. Josh, uh, following up on, on the discussion before the close, I know you're constructive on equities, but, but were you slightly implying that, that you're a little bit more bearish or cautious when it comes to property? Well, I actually think what I actually think what Megan just said is really important. Um, it makes perfect sense that the XLF is at an all-time high, and some of the large caps look amazing. Berkshire, which I own, looks like it's on the verge of a breakout after a very long consolidation period. Uh, American Express looks great. Obviously, the money center banks. That's perfectly intuitive. You have to, you have to consider these companies just had nine months of record-breaking every month record-breaking stock market issuance, M&A, all types of investment banking, selling debt, like anything capital markets related has been incredible. Trading has been great. It's just been this like buffet of very, very, very easy comps from last year combined with explosive growth this year. So that's not going to be what, you're, what you'll hear from consumer staples. That's not what you're going to hear uh, from industrials or from other parts of the market that are a little bit more challenged by some of the supply stuff that we're all, all talking about all day long. So we might, have we might have saved the best for first, and that would be the big concern here with earnings season. But again, I do think we can weather that. Earnings have grown a lot this year, and the multiple on stocks have act has actually shrunk, and it's not as though there have actually been rate hikes yet. So I think there's room for stocks to trade higher even if this isn't as easy of an earnings season as last one was and the one before. So that's kind of the way I'm thinking about things, and hopefully that's what bears out. Megan, what about you? What parts of the market, given that backdrop, do you prefer right now? Well, we are overweight to equities. We're underweight to fixed income because we do see rates moving higher. I think the key for investors is going to be your time frame. Over the next couple of quarters, I expect us to continue to have a higher risk of earnings disappointment. But if you look at retail inventory levels, wholesale inventory levels, they're at all time lows. So we are setting up for a potentially very strong second half of 2022, where we could have a historic inventory rebuild cycle. And so I think if you're willing to look through that, then U.S. large cap is a great place to be. As I said, U.S. small cap is an area we are taking a harder look at um, because they are more exposed to higher rates, not as able to push through pricing pressures, um, and also not as easily uh, able to outmaneuver the supply chain challenges. Um, but international, so far international developed earnings have also come in quite strong, though very early days for that, and valuations are attractive. So. Um, we also don't want to forget about international uh, equities either.